You are now tuned into the truth frequency. We are TFR. TFR. Truth Frequency Radio. When you finally boil it all down, magic is imagination. We, we, we are moving into an age of manifestation. Things become actually less material, more ethereal. The, the, the golden dawn is when we awaken to this new, new, new station of life. What you think becomes real quicker. Regain our imagination, regain our inner child, and let that inner child out, 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 out. My name is Frank Castle, founding member of the music group High Slick and New York City Neo Shaman. After a serious injury sidelined my career in 2013, I decided to set out on an adventure to search for myself with the help of the plant medicine Ayahuasca. What I discovered waiting for me was something I could have never prepared for. It was time for me to become something more, someone more. It was time I became fearless. Space and time When the light starts to shine Inside your third eye You will wake to the knowledge That you never die Oh yeah It's Saturday night <laughs> And I'm your host Frank Castle Your Sorcerer Supreme Right here Each and every Saturday night TruthFrequencyRadio.com And I'm here with my Theoretical translator, Paula Milo. Hey, hey, everyone. And for the 100th time, we take <laughs> to the airwaves to bring to you the story that is forever ongoing for as long as it's been going is as fresh and as new as it feels. Each and every new experience to be shared into its own event, circumstances, learning experience, exponential gnosis. Shout outs to everybody in the chat room. Before we start, I'd like to give a bigger, big, big, huge shout out. Mom and dad are finally home. <laughs> right? Chris and Cherie Geo. Love you guys so much. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here doing this. For We're, the 100th time. For the 100th time. And you guys activated the capstone with us. We all did it. Team effort. Maximum effort. Done. What a great experience. Amazing. People like that. We need more, more people like that on the planet. Everybody should um, should work their way to some kind of hero mentality and go off and do something that you feel you must do that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't forget to check out IamWeAreFearless.com. We're keeping up the Egypt 2018 um, page. Yeah, we should keep it up for a while. Actually. Well, here's what we're doing. All right. For the next, I think it's three more weeks, everything that you purchase in the Egypt 2018 and IamWeAreFearless.com, IamWeAreFearless.com, uh, everything that you purchase in there in the, from that room, that section goes directly to Chris and Cherie, right? So at the, at the end of the time limit, which is like in two weeks, I think, we're going to just shuffle over everything from day one, right. and then we're going to change that room to Beyond the Veil. So you'll have a Beyond the Veil section with all your Beyond the Veil uh, um, uh, stuff. Pa paraphernalia. Paraphernalia. I like that word. That's that's fantastic. And uh, and thanks for posting that uh, in the chat room. <clears throat> and for everyone that wants to take part in the meditations, we talk about this. Chris talks about this. Uh, Cherie talks about it. Paula talks about it. We've been actively for over a, and it's like two months now. We've been doing this is or just about two months, right? Yeah, about that. Yeah, we've been actively <laughs> meditating uh, at least five times a week as a giant group, you know. And uh, I, I'd like to say it started small and worked its way big, but the room did that, but not the meditation group. The meditation group, the the people seem to have been waiting to just say, have someone say, hey, we should do this together. And I heard it from a few people. Hey, do you think we could meditate? Hey, and within... Yeah, it was a collective idea. Yeah. It really was. Well, I think... It, I, th I think everyone wanted something. I think everyone was looking, e even for me. I was like, I wonder if I should do something like this. Would the public respond? But here's the thing. 
It's not the public. It's those that are pulled to the show. The family. Right? Um, yeah. No, and we're given props where props is due. So I was told in the very beginning, episode one, like when you're I, – I saw Chris sitting at the desk with the speakers in front of – um. Uh, in front of the pyramid with the capstone with the eye and he was right at the layer under where the, where the capstone floats and I looked and there were two speakers and he was screaming and then I started pulling people up All right, from that they were like hey listen your, your voice is going to affect certain people it's going to bring them online back then I didn't know I just figured people would hear me and maybe they'd know they're my friend or something I didn't quite know Oh, you're saying this is when... Uh, yeah, yeah, when, when I first, first started, started, they said, your voice is going to attract. But it does. No, I know, but I didn't I didn't realize oh, didn't it was going to bring our it. family Who that knew? we were reincarnated Who? with, that we're from Atlantis, and we're more than that, we're Who? creators. Who knew? Who, really? Who knew we would still be doing this? You know? Who knew that it would take off the way it did? Who knew that so many people would be interested in hearing what two people who live in the Bronx have to say? You know, I'm... But it's you know. not just that. It's not even. It's not even that. It's no. almost like the platform had to be developed and built so Absolutely. we can. Absolutely, and then it took on a life of its own. Yeah, the room has definitely become. And shout outs to Sean and Jimmy, going absolutely berserk with information in that room. I, I can't even begin to tell you. I was worried about some of that information, um, because you're you're required uh, once you know what the information is like if you just read over it and you're like well that's cool you're, you're required to know that now permanently because you're going to go through something at one point or another that that is going to have a requirement that's where the great power comes great responsibility when you have information right we talk over and over about things not working sometimes and the thing they just presented to you i gave you the golden staff with the crystals and everything like that oh here comes an emergency i put the staff down and i go to help and nothing i do works they're like, dude, just take the staff and strike it on the floor. It'll work. You're not using the tools that you've been given for the exercise. But there's no more exercises. It's live time now. We talked about practice and all that other stuff. So now the meditations are just really to build up our energies, to ground us to 5D Earth, um, uh, clean and clear ourselves. We meet in the veil be, uh, beyond the veil of illusion in a safe, sacred space together. And then from there, we start practicing all different styles and techniques of basically meditations and shamanistic approaches to music in general. Yeah, but it's even more than that because we have all of these people coming together in in a very short period of time and everyone has become friends with everyone else. I can't it it's like family, I mean, like real family. Literally helping, you know, uh, during the meditation we usually um, sending healing towards someone. You know, it goes it goes around like you know, we ask I you mean, to put the intention of yours, like if you need help with something in the comment section and we live time, go right to work on. Oh, yeah. And and then I mean, you get bombarded with this energy. I mean, for me in particular, you know, we asked for healing for me. There were other people in the group that needed healing. And I mean, you can feel the energy swirling around you before the question is even completed. Yeah. And it's amazing how, you know, people ac across the country are just coming together for these short bursts of time and really giving give, giving a hundred percent of themselves energetically for this short period of time and then going on about the rest of the day. Right. And if there anybody deserves any thanks, you guys deserve all oh, the thanks. Absolutely. I absolutely. can't do this without you and it's not worth doing without you. Like now that the family's back and the family's growing. This isn't like, oh you it's like a special group or whatever like we're a special group because it's special to us right. we we are understanding on purpose we're growing we're learning we're discovering and we're not we're creating a safe sacred space yep. to work in yep right no judgments safe space yep right the things you can't talk about with everyone else you can come back and do it yet yeah, even the fur babies have been healed that's right because we understand that pets aren't pets they're actually family and friends and the beginnings of another soul that's going to eventually be where you are, right? And we all grow together and we're all there together. Like when you create a good home for your cats, like us, let's say, right? It's rewarding within rewarding within itself. And you get all these, um, when you could see it from like I'd smoke DMT, right? And I'd sit on the other side from the cat and I'm like, yo, the cat's me. 
They, and I'm like, wait, what? And they're like, dude, that cat is you. You can break yourself off multi-dimensional, multi-pieces and give things life. You're a creator. Just Source did it for you. You can do it for others. And you do. You do it so you have a friend or a buddy or a pet. And then that animal, whatever, comes into your life. And then you learn how to give love, share love. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and, and that animal gets to complete its purpose in this life also. Right. I mean, it doesn't have to live a, outside sometimes a, in horrible conditions. It's and, a big give and take, you know, energetically. Yes, You know, absolutely. they have a lot to give also. They're our protectors. Yeah, people yeah. don't realize. I was saying I went through the abduction experience. Aya put me through it. Uh, every abduction from like certain things she wanted me to see. So it was the whole experience was just abduction after abduction after abduction. And at one point I lost it and I, I grabbed the wall and I was trying to climb the wall because these insects were grabbing me. They were like pulling me off the wall. And I was like, oh, my like, I, I, I can't I can't I can't believe this is happening to me. Ah, and squeak my cat um, who passed jumped into my lap and they just bugged that like literally like they backed up off me and I calmed down into the experience and I grounded I was petting him I'm going oh they're, they're gonna get us they're gonna get us and he was like on alert on alert and then things backed up sure. I took a deep breath and the experience started from a slightly different perspective which allowed me to watch it instead of being part of it like because that he came in to protect you and that was his job and and that's basically what we're all doing. We're coming in together during these meditations to give and receive energetically. Like this morning, I had a reading with Dana. She's in the group, Michigan, Dana, Michigan. And you'll find her on Facebook in the group. And she gave me a reading, a psychic reading, and it was extremely helpful. And, you know, if you have the time and you're interested in gaining some knowledge, you should definitely contact her because she is... She's amazing. We have specific gifts and specific talents. Uh, oh, absolutely. And we are putting them to the test. We are flooring it and pulling back on the throttle and saying, okay, what occurred there? What happened? Okay, you got the information. Let's do it again and practice and oh, practice yeah. and Ju over Julie and over. Julie in the chat room just said the same thing. Dana is incredible. Dana she is. is I mean, incredible. but, you know, you have all these people right at your fingertips. And so we didn't even know each other were there. Yeah. That's the thing. Contact them. If you need help, contact them. All right. So them. the room is, because uh, I've been waiting to say it. <laughs> I keep forgetting, is uh, the Fearless TFR room. It's a group in uh, on Facebook. So it's Fearless TFR. If you're interested, oh, and what's the one thing you have to do, Paula? You have to answer the question. If you don't answer the question? You can't get into the group. Why can't you get into the group? It's protection. It's our protection. If you We're can't making... answer a simple question, you can't be in the group. we don't want you in the group. We want to make sure people are getting vetted. And we so want it, proactive. And we want it to continue to be a safe space. We don't want anyone in there proving to their families that they're not crazy Proving to other people that this is a legit conversation that, you know, they're having. You need to be here because you want to be here. You have to answer the question. Right. I had to answer the question. To everyone. I, literally. Well, there was I a few in the very the beginning. I, I added. I added some people in the beginning. I said, oh, I'm not, I'm not allowed to do that. And I didn't know why. And then I, I, I didn't know how to use Facebook that well. So I was just playing around with it. And I realized what you can do. And how much, uh, you know make people administrators and everything. It got so crazy. Yeah, Shaman and Jimmy's an administrator, so if anybody needs anything in I the mean, group or information. I mean, these conversations are really out there, and they're not for everyone. And, you know, we're trying to create this safe space where no one is judged. Shout-outs to all the become-your-own-shaman, by the way. I oh, have another yeah. Free. Yeah, that, 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 and then that, that's just, that's I just can, amazing, too. We have facilitated through this so many at this point when people are like, oh, my God, what are you doing, lowercase g? I'm like, uh, nothing. I'm, oh. I'm the creator, and so are they. And they know it, and they, they can tell between my mother doing it, I'm doing it, save me. It, it, all right, this isn't a silver bullet. It's an experience to have to walk through the fire so you can step up and handle your responsibilities in this weird 3D environment just way, way better. It clears the playing field so you get your gnosis back, right? So you're going crazy, work, and school, and this thing and that thing and all these crazy things and you can never take a breath without having to do another thing before you can even breathe again hold on let's clear this squeak 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 all gone let's just go back to you yeah start from start from exactly where you are right now let's remove the ptsd 
some of the drama, how to deal with some of this stuff. Okay, is the clean slate. Okay, now you wake up the next day, start again. Right. Right? Now think and watch what occurs. And people are just exploding with... No sis. They're catching up. The things we've been talking about for however long the show's been on now, two and a half years or whatever. Yeah, yeah about, about that. Okay, so everything. So I've been on the journey for four years then. Okay, so, so in that time, people are becoming your own shaman now, catching right up. They still have a lot to learn naturally. But so when, I, when I'm talking and then Paula says something, they're able to jump right in and go, well, what about this? And so, yeah, oh, no I didn't one, even know no about feels, I didn't even know about yeah, that. And no one feels lost in the conversation. Yeah, no one's feeling lost because, because we're all caught their, up. Yeah, bringing their own gnosis, bringing their own experience. You know, and, I spoke to a bunch of people privately, too, and – um. I try to do that. It's easier than me typing for hours. When I'm not swarmed, I grab someone in the room that needs, and they. It, it always seems to come out right as I have the time to do it too. Like, hey, would it be okay just to call you and just talk about this because this is important? And if you know this, then when I'm not around and you're around discussing it with everyone else, you literally, you and I pick this apart for two hours. We both learn stuff. So it wasn't me educating you. It was a conversation between two creators. Yeah. One just went up the hill a little bit further, but the other one's been here longer. See how that works? More experience on one end and more experience on the other end. And they meet, discuss, figure out, pull what they need, move it on. And then share. Yeah. Move it on into their – because as you fix your inside – your outside begins to reflect it, right? Oh, Wouldn't yeah. that be the truth? Yeah. Living your truth? Yeah. Well, that's what, you know, when we say you're beautiful inside and out, you know, if you're an ugly person inside, it's coming through. Okay. So, Wait, let me just say this. It says, Frank, I love how, uh, um, how do we figure out what the other stones are? Okay. The black stone is a grounding stone. In, it's an oh, Apache in the, fear. In the fearless. In the fearless, kids, in we, the fearless we have kids. the hearts for sale. That um, that Chris and Cherie placed inside the pyramid. So, if you got to hit me up on the mess on Messenger right now on Facebook. I do a PayPal thing. It's only twenty bucks, but there's a whole package to it. So, what, the black stone's an Apache tier. It's a grounding stone. You hold that in one hand while you hold the heart in the other. The peacock stone was the other stone, and that stone is for just like really good energy and good vibes and for healing vibration so you feel good while it's in your energy field and it disseminates the rainbow energies then if there's the stickers and the little uh acacia so you, you get a little bit of acacia just so you can have the mother plant with you so you can take yeah. like a deep breath right out of it almost like a little smelly smelling salt of ayahuasca because that's what the whole house will smell like when you're cooking it you know, people were smelling it going, wow, this is more intense than this or more intense than that. I'm like, look, that's straight up a Hawaiian acacia. That's beautiful mother plant, right? So having that in your arsenal, you'll be able to sit there. You'll start feeling good. You'll be connected to your family through the heart. You're correct. You're connected to all of us and the pyramid itself. We're, it, that, it's like your own ley line. We're creating our own grid, right? So that's what, what they're um, – that's what they uh oh and and for. more on the fearless kits we want to thank everyone who purchased a, a kit and uh we want to say that we do have more kits available if you're interested and we are trying to figure out the, how to the, ship overseas yeah how to ship internationally without it um being 65 dollars yeah. we're like whoa so we're we're trying to figure that piece out so if you guys could just hang on hang or on. if you know how to do that yeah just, hit me up yeah, just message friends. i'm gonna start an amazon store just to see if i can get yeah, that we can discount the get, shipping. get the discount shipping and then just be able to send it all over because I, I do have international um, um, shipping. That's crazy. You have the Apache uh, tier. Look up the definition. It's beautiful. Um, it's actually horrible, but it's beautiful. The stones are the tears of the Apache women who had to watch the Apache men get driven off the the cliffs by the um, by the men. And when that occurred, they watched them die, and their tears fell to earth. And Aya decided to turn them into those stones. Now, for us. Anyone who saw April's stone after the meditation, it's a black stone with like white mineral on it. We didn't want them polished because we want 
Yeah, we wanted to keep them rough, uh, uh-huh. tum- tumbled. We wanted to keep them rough like that. Um, yeah, because if we, there's something to when you pull it out of the earth. It has everything on it that you need. When you polish it, it's like really nice and it looks good. But like the truth is the truth. You don't have to polish it. Like you just set it free and it's the truth. Once you start dressing that stuff up, it's because you have an issue with it. Just keep that in mind. So now you hold the stone and you're guaranteed to remember to ground to earth. You've got to ground to Gaia to do this, man. If you're a lightning rod and you get hit and you're not grounded, you explode. So these new energies will make your head pop. And uh, we've had some experiences with the new energies that have been pretty crazy. But I want to continue. I just want to go with this. <coughs> So the group, if you can get in, if you answer the question, and uh, and it's fearless, uh, it's Facebook fearless TFR is the group room. Everyone in there is beginning to blossom into new mm, creators. Like I'm remembering who I am, and I can do this. And then you start to say to yourself, "This is amazing," because I was vetting people at first. I was literally showing up in the meditations getting them built up and then sticking my light sword through them. And if they, yeah, every single person <laughs> giggled. And then I realized every single person was, had uh, like our soul DNA was meant to be there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because the people that aren't meant to be in a part of this, this, this thing that's happening, we can call it whatever we want. We can call it the shift. We can call it new earth. We can call it, I mean, whatever you want to call it. But the people that aren't meant to stay, don't stay. They don't come back. They don't message while they're uh, meditating. They're they're just they're just not there. They're in and out. And you know, I mean, even myself, I I wasn't there for all of the meditations. It's it's you know you can't be all of the time. You know now I'm trying to take a more active role and you know. Um, um, Abel stone started glowing in the camera. It's a black stone with that white stuff on it. So we've gone. Oh, I, oh, I saw we've the picture. gone from. Yeah. From, hey guys, what's an Apache tier to my stone glows with my creator energy flowing through it. Wait, Pixar, it didn't happen, April. Oh, yeah? Blip. Here you go. Take a look. Holy. I saw that. Holy moly, it I happened. It looked like the, the infinity one of the It did. That's, from, all right, from, all right, <laughs> that's what I was going to get at. All right, she has the soul stone. Get her. <laughs> but, but that's what it was like. But that's what no, happened that here. is it. You know, when I'm holding your stones during the meditations, uh, that one stone, that one stone, the dark heart that you have, that stone gets hot and the other one stays cool. I can't hold that stone without a selenite in the other I hand. I know, because you need a ground. It's like you need to be grounded. Because I'm going to I'm gonna blow know, a I hole know. out of myself. My hands shake terribly. Yeah. And I'm like, what's happening to me? Also, stuff we were learning. Uh, how copper affects things, how if you put water in a copper cup, you can uh, charge the, the – your you can take your energy and charge your water with intention. Right? Like, I love you. Please heal me. I love you. Please heal me. You say it a couple of times. You say like a little mantra. To me. Dana Michigan was just telling me that this morning to use that technique – to uh to heal myself every use that technique there's she a group of us doing it, it on, the sh- on the meditations every day i put the copper cup out i do what you do i run my hand over it i say my little thing all right so a bunch of us were using moscow mules right that's what we use here the, I, that's a cup made of copper the water started tasting amazing right now i'm using no, non-fluorinated water it's not bottled water it's literally it's, it's water that's run through a filter it's run through an, an awesome one all right I'm also saying to it, as it's in the filter, there's stickers on the filter that say, I love you. So oh, when yeah. I, every time yeah. I go there, I see a sticker and I go, oh, I love, love you. you. I love <laughs> you. I love you. And we're going to talk about that. Like you, and we've talked about this, so it sounds like we're repeating, but we're not. It's the people in our group, and then we're on the show tonight, and there's 3,000 people listening. I want to let them know that how this works and how these different techniques are helping people like crazy like i'm wearing the copper yeah the copper cups. right the the om na shiva on, mm-hmm. on one end and um oh god om na patty man uh yeah this is what this is the one nick gave you patty right? home and yeah then you bought one. and i like the one he gave you better no it, so when i project energy 
into the cup, which is also copper. Yeah. It's like drawing. Yeah. I can feel it. And you go, what the hell is that? Like, I, I was laughing at the Tommy Copper commercials. Oh, how's that copper stupid sock going to help your foot? And they're like, dude, copper helps. And I'm like, yeah, I'm calling BS on that one. It's the conductor. That's, that's then you happens. realize that you're a lightning rod. Yes. And now you're like, wait a second. That's why you were compelled to buy the, those copper coins. Because now you know. Om, Panny, uh, Manny, Padme, Hum. That's it. Thank you, Nicholas. By the way, shout outs to, uh, to Nick Zervos. Yes, awesome. and, and your bird in and Hawaii. Bird. Awesome. Oh, his bird's name is Pat. I named it. Because oh. he can't tell if it's a guy or a girl. Oh, oh no, sorry, I'm in trouble. So you, picked a, you picked an androgynous. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I said, just call it Pat. Pat. So, um, <clears throat> Paula throws love. We have a minute to talk about this. When you're running around, here's something else we've been learning. We've been building up our energy and just sending love at everything, right? So we were in the movie theater, right? And the guy's like, have a nice day. And Paula goes, thanks, love. And the guy went to answer and started stuttering like a... Like a nervous maniac. All right. Because he couldn't handle... The fact that someone was giving love because people aren't used to. What about the guy in the store? You packed this bag. Oh, amazing. Yeah, we were in Rite Aid and the kid behind the counter did such a nice job packing my bag. I said, oh, you did such a great job packing my bag. And he said, are you being sarcastic? And I said, no, you literally did a good job. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. It's crazy if I just walk up right by the face and say, yo, I'm the Sorcerer Supreme, bro. Now sending positive vibes. Feel this family in the house. No hate, no hype, no fear. You're listening to Truth Frequency Radio. We are TFR. song you're hearing is called Come Alive. It's by me, Frank Castle. If you like any of the music, uh, you can check out Heist Click, H-E-I-S-T-C-L-I-C-K, and you can find all my music, Heist Click music on YouTube. Uh, um, I have a little section which is Frank Castle solo music, and that song's there, and there's a couple other cool things. I have songs on the way. I do have distribution, so just go and listen, and then the 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 songs will get you know, through distribution, just from listening to it on YouTube, I'll get a little tiny something out of it. And it's really nice to pay it forward. And if you really enjoy it, you know, buy a song, share it with someone. You know what? And if you just rip it and you just sing to it in the background, I'm down with that too, because I love you guys. And also, Nick, that's the same problem I was having when I say good morning to people. I don't like to say good morning because it means good morning. And I'm like, why do I wish you good yeah, bed? Yeah, yeah. That makes no sense. It's like going, hi, is that up, down? Oh, I, I went left, right, and then went <laughs> went north. And I'm like, what? That makes no sense. How about greetings? Greetings. But then it, say, it sounds weird when you do that, right? And if you walk up and just go, hey, I love you, it just you, you're a weirdo. Yeah, but we have single-handedly gotten more people to say I love you in the last what would you say, six months? Oh, my. Then a year. Probably, I start talking that crap a year ago. I'm like, wait, probably, I'm going to get men to tell me they love me. Yes. And you're like, and what? And you probably said, I love you more in the last six months than you've ever said it your entire life. I am in. Uh, honestly, think about that. Yeah. Think about that. No, I, I put. Listen, I didn't believe it. Didn't believe it. I put it to the test, the science experiment. I'm going to throw love at a whole bunch of things and just put I remember when you and then the ball goes in their court all of a sudden. Yep. Thanks, love. 
what, 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 oh, you're very welcome. Oh, like the, like the, well, I'm going to tell you a funny story quick. Um, the, the, the lady in the post office. So now we've been running oh to my. the post office a lot to, to deliver, to, um, send out and deliver these crystals. So Frank had gone to the post office by himself and the lady in the post office was very mean to him and made him rewrite everyone's address on a sticker and stick it on the envelopes before she would even process the, the, the payment for the envelopes. I was like, are you kidding me? So, and he did it. So he, every time, you know, he, it happened once or twice to him. And he said, I hate going to the post office. It's a horrible experience. So then I went with him because I was going to drop the biggest love bomb on this lady. <laughs> and she completely freaked out when she saw me. She did not ask Frank to rewrite any addresses on I mean, labels. she just took everything and she just did. processed it. I was like, what the F? And, you know, I dropped the love word a couple of times and she looked at me like I was crazy. But she realized that I am not there to hurt her or harm her in in any way. And then Frank went back and I had an excellent experience. He's been with having <laughs> an excellent experience now. All right. We did the test for jury duty. But it is. <laughs> yes, you did the test for jury duty. Tell them. Get me the hell out of here. I told everyone in the meditations, you got to get me out of here. You got to get me out of here. I went down. They they picked me as Jorah 11. I'm like, are you serious? So I just go with it. Right. Instead of being angry. Because it was already a weird experience. I haven't been on the train in a long time. And yeah, I, that, actually, you handled that better than I think you've handled anything. anything. <laughs> you know, it was like a non-issue for you. Well, because I think something was, as we were doing our intent, right? Everyone's sending love ahead and yes, don't pick yes. them, don't pick them. So they pick me. Then they start asking me questions. I answer the questions. Truthfully and honestly, I felt like I was submitting to the experience. The guy starts looking at me and says, you know, this isn't like CSI. So the girl next to me is like, oh, and I'm like, oh, you watch CSI every day. I go, yeah, you and Paul. I go, <laughs> guess what? And if you and Paul are watching it, guess who else is watching it? I'm watching it. So I get it. I get it. And the guy's like, there's no spectrometer to check the dust underneath the fingerprints inside the, the carpet fibers. None of that's being presented. This kid had a gun and blah, blah, blah. So I'm like. Okay, that's pretty weird. And then they start questioning us, and I go, they, "Have you ever been beat up?" Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paraphrase. So I'm like, "Yes, I have." And they're like, "How many times?" And I'm like, "I honestly can't tell you how many times." They're like, "Why not?" I'm like, "Because it's that many." Too many to count. So he's like, "Well, how many times was someone arrested from that?" And then I'm like, "Never." And he's like, "Wait, what?" He goes, well, "How many? You can't tell me how many times." You've gotten into fights on the streets where somebody needs to be arrested and then nobody's ever been arrested. I was like, nope. And he was like, interesting. Do you have any family in the police? And I go, yep. <laughs> I told them who and they were like, OK, interesting. I says, yeah, I got another one that's an uncle. He's roaming the building right now. And they were like, have you ever been arrested? <laughs> hey, <laughs> have you ever been arrested? And I went, yes. And they were like, oh. So I go, and a the girl in front of me started screaming about systems of control. She was arguing with them, and the girl next to me on the other side was Christian, and she's like, I can't judge people, man. I don't want to be here to judge nobody. Like, she was bugging out. And the other girl was talking about systems of control, and I'm like, well, does anyone, are we going to see any witness here, any witness that's going to be other than the police? Literally. And they were like, no. And I go, well, so it's a gang's? are going to going to come in here with badges and tell us how it went down and then there's just that guy sitting there and that's it and they were like yep and I'm like okay that's pretty much it and then from that they were like okay you're you're picked you're going in the other room so I go into the glass room and I'm I have headphones on and I'm listening to meditations from the group <laughs> and I go dear universe I have looked out this window a thousand times. I, first I went a hundred. Then I went, no, it's been a thousand. I've been in this courthouse so many times. And I go, and I've been in this jury room and I've been a juror and I, I'm looking at the people in the room and people are just, they're people, man. And I'm like, I love everyone in this room. I don't give a shit. I don't care. I love you. Right. And then I go universe literally. 
as I look out this window onto the city of New York and I'm looking at this really crappy background of buildings and just cops walking around and me going, geez, I can't wait to get out of here so I can smoke a joint going, ah, thank God there's no thought crime. Do I really need to learn anything from this experience like at all? And then I heard no loud and clear. I also heard stuff like, well, we've been waiting for you to mm-hmm. come to that mentally. And I'm like, oh, so then what's going to happen? They were like, we don't know. Just hang out. So I go to leave like lunch was over or whatever they were doing. They were taking me out of the room. And then they go, uh, Frank, you can s- go back downstairs. And I'm like, what do you mean? And they were like, oh, and you and you and you. None of you were picked. Do- don't feel bad. Just go downstairs. So I went downstairs. And then they didn't pick me, and they said, you have to come back tomorrow. Went through the same thing with meditation. The next morning, came back, 1,000 and more more people in this room. They pick everyone, and then there's six of us sitting there. They don't call us. And then at like 12 in the afternoon, this guy goes, Frank, can we see you outside? And I go, oh, here it goes. I'm going to jail. I know it. I know it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. They picked me for something. But I or I'm getting locked up, but I didn't do anything. I don't think I did anything. Oh, my God. Do they know about all this stuff? Do I? I'm like, oh, lowercase G's across the board. And I go outside and the guy's like, thank you so much. Thank you for your service. You will get paid for yesterday and today. Forty dollars a day. Here's a piece of paper signed by us. If if they call you within six years, you just show them this paper and you don't got to do nothing. Thank you for your service. Have a great day. And I was like, are you serious? Thank you so much. I love you. I grabbed the paper. Yeah. The guy looked me in the eye. He was smiling. And I just made a beeline right for the door. Sure. I walked all the way down to 149th Street from the, on the Grand Concourse, which is right by – I was up on 161st, right on Yankee Stadium. It's like right at the top of a hill right near Yankee Stadium. And you could just look down the hill, see Yankee Stadium and the train station. It's kind of cool. And I just walk all the way down through the neighborhood, which is really no bueno. And I get to the train station, zip my thing. The train's there. The door opens. I get on. It closes behind me. You can't write this story any better. Okay. Now to get to the story tonight because after 100 episodes and some of the stuff we've told you and we've shared with you these experiences and you went out on your own and became your own shaman and – or just enjoy the show, but you find out these experiences, this, this is real. Yeah, one by one you're realizing <laughs> that these things are real. Like these entities do attack. And, and they're you know, there. They're, and they're, they're there with not us all, the, all we... of the time. So, you know, and it's funny that we're, we were coming upon our 100th show and this really freaky thing happens the other day. So Frank comes home from jury duty and he's probably in the best mood I think I could imagine him to be in coming home, having to come home from jury duty. And to make a long story short, we end up having a great conversation. Frank leaves the house to run an errand, comes back, and I unleashed like an animal. Like it was. I didn't recognize who I was. She became the person that when you drink the energy drink on the on the on the commercial where they're like, become the monster and raw, take the day. That was her. Uh, but, <laughs> but prior to that, I felt fine. And, you know, like I'm pretty honest about, you know, I'm pretty honest about what happens in my life. And I do take responsibility for the things that I do. So, you know. I basically unleashed into this 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 unrecognizable person and started spewing stuff that I don't even know where it came from and and I I caused an argument over absolutely nothing and it was And we both just to lighten it slightly into my both sides I had one of those moments during the week and was just blasting, screaming at like the top of my lungs a few times at a f- at a few different situations. So, so you this were was like my it was, that it was like easily. my turn, <laughs> and I start screaming basically like an I, I mean really I was an animal, and I can't even I can't even imagine what it must have looked like having to see me like this because or from I, hearing it down the block, it must have sounded like murder. I mean, I was screaming so loud. And, and I foul. never, I mean, honestly, I very rarely get mad. 
Frank knows, and everyone basically who comes here to the house knows, I have a very even disposition. And nothing really really upsets me. Like Frank Yeah, Nick's the only one that's afraid of you. Yeah, Nick is the and only one that's afraid he's, of He's me. never seen any of this side of you. No. Which never, I haven't either. Never. Really. And you know But he knows down deep inside. It, but it's but it's but it was horrible. <laughs> and you know, then what happened after that was even worse. Okay, so I have to escape her because now I'm damaged goods. I'm like shaking. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, what did I do to myself? Like, I, I didn't do any, like, no, there was, it was a big miscommunication and a big misunderstanding. And uh, I had to get away from her, right? But there's nowhere to go. So I'm just like, I, was, I wanted to be home <laughs> with everyone. I go in the bedroom and I lay down. So while I'm laying in bed, I start, I can't breathe, right? Like, <sighs> 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 Like, I, I have to show you, like, it just started happening. I couldn't breathe. And it got worse. She jumped in bed, and she starts telling me things. And I'm going, I can't, I can't be around you right now. I got, I got to get up. Well, at least that's what I was thinking. Right? So I, I get up to get out of the bed. And when I hit, my feet hit the floor, it feels like the ocean's moving. And I'm going for the door, and I'm going over waves. So it's like, whoa, whoa, all right? And then I'm on my knees oh, as sorry. I got into the living room, and then I don't remember anything for a moment, and I wake up paralyzed on the floor. Oh, you were, you were well, I'll tell you. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'll just, I'll just throw it. In my head, right, I opened my eyes, and I was moaning, and I was yelling for help to you. But internally, I was screaming, what's happening to me? I don't know what's ha happening in my face, right? So I think I'm having a stroke or a seizure or something big time. It was definitely a seizure, definitely. I was shaking bad, and my arms were like baby T-Rex arms, right? I, I know what it looks like because I know I, – I call it something way different, and I'm not going to say what I call this on the radio because <laughs> it's just rude, right? But – I hit my head once and I went had a seizure and I kind of did the same thing. So I was having this like, whoa, moment. I couldn't feel my feet. There was loud ringing in my ears. Oh, yeah. OK. I know I was in a pool of my own drool because I had zero control over my body. I couldn't feel my toes. I, I was nervous. I couldn't feel my my junk. And I was going below my and I had to pee. This was the weirdest part, like really bad. And I could feel that I had to pee, but I couldn't feel anything else there. Like literally from my belly button down was dead, numb. I was like, I can't I can't move, but I'm shaking and my body was tight, like tight muscles straight. Like, ah, gah, 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 gah. OK, now Paula comes running. I go, Paula, I, I need. Help. I need help. I just barely get that out of my mouth. I, all, I thought all I was in my head. I was like, come save me quick. But all I heard was blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah, blah. and my my jaw was being pulled up this side the right side of my face. Like I've never felt pain like that before. Now they're telling me he's not having a heart attack. It's not a heart attack. It's not a stroke. So now I'm thinking, oh, my God, I caused this man to have a panic attack. Because I was being a beast and he's having a panic attack because of me. But now I have to pull myself together because I have to get him off the floor. I'm, I'm dead weight. So I'm just about I'm 195 pounds or to 200 pounds at any given time. And all right. So she rolls me over. OK. And I just I'm like, I don't know what's happening. And I'm going, what's happening to me? It's happening to me. Then I look up. And I see me leaving. Like, see you. I'm I'm getting out of here. You're out. I'm out. Th this is this is a wrap. And I'm like, w w wait a second. Where are you going? And then I'm like, how? Wait. How am I communicating with you? First of all, and then my eye. All right. This was happening so fast. I was seeing from my higher self's eyes down at me, and I saw what I looked like, and I was like, oh. And then back up, and I was out of my body, though. So I'm like, what is causing me to scream bloody murder? No, you have to come back. You have to come back. No, 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 no. You have to come back to me. And 
I saw my great grandfather was standing next to me and the white light was there. Ever, my dudes and dudettes, my family out there. I was dead. I was looking up and the AI in my suit, your suit is an AI, right? So you're sometimes you're you'll see someone getting I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but frightened to death. It's like your your body's reacting but you're gone. Right. It's like when you chop the head off the snake and the body's still withering around, you're still yelling for stuff, but you're not there. I was not there. I I wasn't feeling pain. I was feeling the slipping of goneness like I'm out and he was pulling me and I'm like, yo, what are you doing here? Well, I don't I don't want to go. And he's like, no, I'm taking you home. And then I saw the white light was I mean, it was different than what I thought was going to happen. The whole background was the white light and around me. And I was like trying not to look at it because I know that's the. Uh, the Archon trick is to pull you with your family, like a family member shows up holographically, he grabs you by the arm, takes you into the white light, and boom, you're just recycled into the planet. And I'm going, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not, uh, my head just opened. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm like, I'm not yeah, doing I'm it. I'm not done. I'm okay. not going. So my higher self drops, when I mean angrily, back into my body. It looked like Superman was throwing the punch when he yep. flies and just punches the enemy. Except the thing that landed in me was a giant white lion. It was like this other version of my higher self. And was they're all angry at me at this point. I mean, just bl- blatantly, flagrantly like, yo, get, like I'm taking over. Boom. And I, I've seen the paws in my hands. But my hands don't open because of my injury. So it was going, I can't, I hate being here. And I'm like, what? Now, someone else in the room, my buddy Mike, Michael in the room, was talking about how his, he had a conversation under IO or mushrooms with this higher self. And the higher self's like, look, you need to come up here and vibrate higher. We come down there, it's a problem. It, right. It's right. a problem. You don't want us to come down there. No, you vibrate you to, to, us, to us and then we connect. Because you have to vibrate up. Right, right, exactly. So, yeah, and that's the whole thing. Everyone moves right. symbiotically together. They can't make another move until we come up. Right. So they're stuck. So they have to come back over here and then just wait above in a higher vibration for you to realize what's going on. You know, it's a, it's a joke to people, the meme, where it says – I'm the reason my guardian angel drinks. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I saw what that meant. Oh, yo, there was a flash of light over your head. Holy shit. Oh, just now? Just now. It was like it looked like a lightning rod. All right. So now you get me up somehow. I get. I don't know This girl is so – for your injury, you're so full of shit. You have a bionic arm. I know. I know. Your good arm is stronger than six men's uh, I in ha- construction I doing hammer work on steel. So I get, <laughs> I get him up. He's, he's so stupid. We were just watching Captain America I and get... hook good arm will catch the shield and throw it right back at him. Yeah, I know, but I can't wash my hand with my right arm. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah, we get you. You we, get me. I get you to the ca- I don't know how. I on get the you couch. to the couch. And... I have you sitting up, and we establish that you're not having a stroke. Oh, thank you so much. You're like, who are you talking to? And I'm like, my great grandfather's sitting right next yeah, to me. Yeah, and I'm like, well, you better tell him you're not going anywhere because you know. Yeah, now, it got ugly. It you was know, scary. And it ended up being. Okay, a- hold on, Raoul. We'll do this quick now. So my grandfather says to me while Paul is like, "Tell whoever it is to leave. You're not leaving. You're not going anywhere." She's right. yelling at me like. Total old lady from Poltergeist. She's Paula makes that chick look weak as fudge. <laughs> as fudge. I'm, t- I'm telling you. Alexia will tell you too. She knows. That whole crew knows. Right? So she's like, I'm like, nah, he wants me to open my mouth. So now I'm crying. Hysteric. Like I'm begging for my life. Like, I don't even know what the, what's going on anymore. And he's like, open your mouth. So I go, uh, and he's like, no, no open your mouth and I, I realize I can't my jaw is killing me it's, it's like being pulled up the side of my head and then something goes open and my mouth opens I can't feel my tongue this guy sticks his hand in my mouth and grabs my jaw from the inside 
then sticks his other hand in and goes, open your mouth. And I go, Gah! and he, my jaw pops right back in place. My right. jaw was dislocated. So I'm going, oh my, oh my God, Lil KC, what's happening? What's happening? Right. And he goes back, he pulls his hands out of my mouth. I close my mouth. I'm going, oh, my mouth is swollen. I can't, I can't speak. I think I'm stroked out or whatever. He goes, you have way bigger problems right now than me and a stroke. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, just look in your mouth. I look down because now I'm clear, right? Because I've been crying and shaking like a fool, purging whatever energies. I, I look right down to my right, and there's a gigantic white reptilian, literally looked like a Komodo dragon, had me by my face, right by my jaw, and was just pulling and was not letting go, and it was injecting this green stuff into my face. And I'm going, uh, uh, and Paul just is like figuring out what's going on. I know there's only three minutes. You, you went and got the ayahuasca bucket. Yeah. And, and, and you were like, hold on, hold trying on. To push it out. She came over to me, ran her hands That's over so my jaw, true. and I started throwing up as if I was drinking ayahuasca. Yeah. And this stuff was just blah, blah, blah. All right. Alexia could talk to this. You ready? Like, who, what, what, who, who is that? It's way worse than that with throw up coming up and everything. This thing would not let go of my face. It was telling me how much it hated me. He was telling me this, you made it physical. He's blaming me. He's, you did this, you and your, your family and your, this ridiculousness. We'll, we'll get every last one of you are targeted. And I was like, get out of my house it took everything oh it took the both of us i couldn't see right i yeah. couldn't open my eyes and then when i did open my eyes i couldn't see and then i couldn't see with my eyes closed though it was a full call it what you want lsd ayahuasca dmt mushrooms full could see perfectly everything i needed to see and can tune in to whatever I needed to, I don't, I don't understand that. I think in these heightened, these experiences are insane. I was out, I was dead. They I, were insane. Paula I, was completely, she's right here. She was done. Like, oh, I can't believe this. I said, this is not going to happen over an argument. So we realized we were attacked by some sort of entity because for me to behave that way and for Frank to respond that way, I, I mean, we it, it looked now. like there was an eye session. And, and I mean, he, all he had was a cup of coffee. Yeah. You know, I mean, it wasn't, it, it, it just, it was, it was a very frightening. Uh, all right, so frightening. when the girls were here, just like, so I can compare real quick, we did a meditation when they were done with their, uh, they were done the day before with anything. So they hadn't done anything for a full 24 hours. They were here. We did a full meditation, middle of the meditation. It starts happening again. We get the eye bucket. She starts purging. But that's what happened the other the day. The experience just starts happening again. She yeah. starts throwing up. You realize you got an attachment. This is happening yeah. because you have 33 people meditating at you. Literally going, congratulations, girls. I'm going, she needs help. This thing's still here. And boom, she just starts throwing up. It happened with Chris. It happened with me. Well, continue the story. Um, Happy 100th episode. I love you so much. You're awesome. Thank you for being here with me. Without you, it wouldn't be good either. No. All right, without you guys, it wouldn't be anything yes, either. Yes, without you, it would be nothing. It'd suck a dude, dude. Right, so love you guys so much. Your protection from, from deception. deception. And stick around. Beyond